Mike, we're back for another live event. And it's great to be back, Corbin. Absolutely. You know? sure. Absolutely. Uh, thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, protecting equine joints. That's right. Very important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, is this, if this is your first time um, ever jumping on to one of our live streams, uh, you know, we're pretty laid back about things. We are. Uh, we're, we're very casual. Absolutely. If you have a question, please send us that question. Absolutely. And uh, if it's at the appropriate time, we'll stop and actually answer that question for you. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. de definitely don't hesitate to, uh, to drop a, a comment in and uh, to ask that question. Um, if you need to, we're going to be monitoring the comments and are going to do our best to answer them. Um, in the meantime, drop a comment below. Let us know where you're, wa where you're watching from. Uh, let us know what life data products you're currently supplementing with and, and how long you've been supplementing with. Uh, all those are, are you know, things that we love to hear mm -hmm. uh, and love to know. Uh, so, you know, of course, we have the presentation today uh, that, that Mike has work, been working hard on all week, getting prepared for. Uh, and on top of that, we have giveaways today. We do. We have, um, have several giveaways. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, we have our live trivia giveaways that we do, uh, where Mike's going to ask a couple trivia questions, uh, and then we um, have you guys all answer them. And, uh, and then we'll, uh, one of those people who get it correctly will be randomly selected to win our prize pack today. Uh, and the prize pack includes the Farrier's Finish, the Hook Clay, T-shirt, hat, and a Compose. Uh, and then we also have our grand prize giveaway, which will run all weekend long. And uh, that will be, uh, we'll have three people actually win a bag of our Farrier's Formula Double Strength Plus Joint. Uh, and to do that, we'll give a little bit of information a little bit later. Uh, the link is down below if you'd like to go ahead and begin that entry. Uh, but make sure you stay tuned because we have that secret code word uh, that can double your chances of winning. Right. And that'll come at the very end, too. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we've got a couple people dropping in comments here. We have California, okay. Ohio, Texas, Ohio. Very good. Mississippi, Michigan. Uh, so it's great. Uh, New York. So it's great to have all of you here today. Sure. Uh, if we have anyone international watching, you know, please let us know where you're watching from as well internationally. Um, well, Mike, you know, I know you've been working pretty hard on on getting this presentation ready uh, and and getting things uh, organized and ready to go. Um, so I, I, let's just jump right in and sure. uh, and let's start talking about some equine joints and what these horse sure. owners can right. do to sure. to protect and preserve and mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. keep those joints moving. Yeah. Of course, you know, Corbin, you know, uh, besides the foot of the horse, uh, the joint health, uh, prolonging joint health, uh, is very vital for that horse to move, mm -hmm. to perform its activity, whether that's a jumper or a barrel horse or a race horse or whatever. So in the presentation today, we'd like to take a look, number one, at just some basic anatomy to begin with when we, when we talk about the joint of the horse itself. And when, when we take a look at this massive, beautiful animal that weighs anywhere from 1,000 to 1,200 pounds, depending on the breed of the horse itself. Of course, I realize we have the draft breeds and we have the many breeds as well, and we're not going to leave them out as well. But regardless of the size of your horse, there's going to be 205 bones that make up the skeleton of those horses. Mm. Okay? Now... We might ask the question, well, what is it that holds all this structure together, the bones themselves? And essentially, that's going to be a joint, mm. okay? And if Mr. Will would bring up our first slide for us, we're going to take a look at some of the different types of joints. Are we up, Mr. Will? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. And, and if you look at the first one there, uh, uh, we have a joint there, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but we have a joint that's very limited in movement. Thank you, Corbin, okay? Uh, and, and basically, uh, a good example is the vertebrae that we're going to find in the back of the bone, of the back of the horse itself. And then the next one there is called fibrous. Basically, this is a totally immovable type of a joint, and an example would be the skull. 
and as that fold matures and ages, uh, that particular uh, joint is actually going to solidify or whatever. And then the last one is the one that we're going to spend our time on today, and it's called the synovial joint. And as you see there, that's going to be a freely moving type of joint. And some other characteristics of this particular joint as well is that there's going to be a fluid that we're going to find that's going to be included in that joint capsule, and it's going to be called the synovial fluid. Mm. And there's a purpose for that. In fact, this fluid is made up uh, quite a bit of what we call hyaluronic acid, and it acts as a lubricant. Mm. It's the grease. It mm -hmm. keeps that joint moving freely. Keeps that bone against bone. Right. It we yeah, we don't want that. So Absolutely. that's Absolutely. that's what that fluid does there. Uh and, and any time that we actually end up with bone against bone, then we're going to end up with some inflammation. Mm. We're going to end up with some pain. And, and as this progresses, then we're going to end up with a lack of movement, a mobility of that particular limb itself. Uh, also included in this joint capsule that we're referring to as a synovial joint, besides the fluid, besides the movement itself, we're going to find some articular cartilage. And that cartilage is going to be attached to either end of the bone. So when we have two bones that actually come together that's going to move, we have this hard cartilage here. And in between that cartilage, we're going to have the fluid or the lubricant itself. And, and you know, when we, when we think about movement and that horse being able to pick up a leg, to run, to trot, to do whatever, besides the foot of the horse, if, if we have a horse that has an abscess in its foot that's foundered, we have a horse that's immobile. And if we have a severe joint problem, we're going to have a horse that's going to be immobile as well, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the joint is, is very, it, it, it's very important that we keep that joint healthy, number one. And we're going to, and as we go through the presentation, we're going to talk about some things that we can do to keep that joint healthy. And the one thing that we're striving for in doing that, we're trying to prolong the usefulness of our horse, of our animal, Absolutely. to get as much time as we can before that horse has to be turned out to pasture, so to speak. Absolutely. Okay. Well, let me ask you this, Mike. Okay. Uh, again, I know we have you know several horse owners. Well, everyone watching, I guess, is, is probably a horse owner. Mm -hmm. um, when can these? When do these horse owners need to begin considering joint prolonging? Okay. Prolonging that joint health. Okay. Of course. Uh, that is one of the sections that I will cover, but right. that's a very good question. You know, when do you actually start? And in my personal opinion, a lot of times we think about, well, I'm going to start uh, thinking about joint health, maybe the inclusion or the addition of a hoof, I mean, a hoof and a joint supplement uh, when the horse is two, three years old. But, uh, but I think, in my personal opinion, I think it goes back to the mare. Mm. I think it starts at conception. In fact, I think we have to start preparing the mare at that point in time to grow and to develop mm. that foal inside as that mare carries that baby. Mm -hmm. And then once uh, that, that foal is delivered, then we start at that point in time as well. And if we start with the mare, number one, we're going to head off a lot of issues. If we got a good, healthy joint in the baby to begin with, then we're far ahead of the game itself. Mm. Now, we could back up one further step as well and say that confirmation of the horse is highly important, and there's going to be a direct relation as far as the confirmation and as to whether we have joint problems down the road. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, if we'll take a look at our mares that we're going to breed, and if we take a look in our stallions that we're going to cover those mares with, and if we got good confirmation in both the mare and the stallion, then hopefully that's going to be passed on to the foal. Hmm. Now, right, the opposite is going to take place. If we have a mare that has poor confirmation, 
that's over to knee, under to knee, cow hop, whatever, more than likely that's going to be passed on to the baby. Hmm. So that's one of the things that we can consider as well, Corbin. Hmm. Okay? Very interesting. Um, again, as we go through this presentation, at any point in time, if you have a question for Mike, uh, feel free to drop it down in the comments. Uh, you know, that's one of the things why, we're, why we do this, why we go live, um, is, is so that we can answer your questions, so we can get that uh, personal one-on-one -on -one with you. Uh, so feel free to drop, to, uh, drop a comment in and let us know if you have any questions. Sure. And, and of course, you know, we were talking about the, the number of bones that's in the skeleton of the horse. And, and one of the things that we need to consider, too, when we talk about the four legs of the horse there's going to be a total of 80 bones in the four legs of that particular horse. Mm -hmm. And that's not quite half, but it's close to half of the total skeletal system of the horse. Mm. And one of the things that's involved in the limbs uh, of that particular horse is that knee. And within that knee, there's at least eight different bones there with three different joints just in the knee itself. So one of the things that we need to really pay attention to is confirmation, as we already mentioned. Uh, but the other thing is that we need to maintain a regular barrier schedule. And when we do that, whether that's a four or five or a six week schedule, then we're going to keep the foot balanced, mm. okay? And, and if everything is in balance at ground level, it's going to be remain balanced up through the limb itself, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if we have a horse that has some conformation issues, then your farrier can do certain things to help offset that and get the, the horse as close to being balanced as possible. So a regular farrier schedule is extremely important uh, when it comes to joint health. Absolutely. Okay? absolutely. All right. And, and I think at this point in time, I think it's time for question number one. Okay. Uh, and if Mr. Will, I think is going to put that question up for us. All right, so uh, question number one, uh, and the way we do this, just in case you've never uh, participated in our trivia, uh, is we're going to pop up that question, and uh, you have two minutes to answer that question, um, and then Will in the back is going to randomly choose uh, an individual who got the correct answer, uh, and that person is going to win uh, a bottle of our Farrier's Finish, a hoof clay, a Farrier's Formula cap, a t-shirt and we've got of course the teal and then we also have the dark green and we have a yellow we do um and then along with that we also have a bag of our compose uh, and that compose of course is our uh, calming supplement mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, i know a lot of people tend to use that this time of year when they're traveling uh and they're having to uh, do some you know trailer sure. trailer training and whatnot that really kind of comes in handy uh during that time yeah, and it's an all-natural product, Corbin. In fact, what you're going to find in Compose is tryptophan, magnesium, and thiamine. Mm. And, of course, those ingredients or nutrients are already in the system of the horse to begin with. But a lot of times, if we have a horse that has nervous tendencies, a lot of times that horse may be deficient in one of those three. Absolutely. So all we're doing is trying to get back what needs to be in the system of the horse to begin with. And all it's going to do is mellow the horse out. Mm. And with Compose, it can be fed on a per-activity basis, or it can be fed on a daily basis as well. Absolutely. And then the other two products that you mentioned there are some excellent topicals for the foot of the horse. Uh, both of them are antimicrobial. Uh, the Ferris Finish, which is a liquid product, versus the clay, which is going to be a clay-like substance in itself. But the liquid has an added advantage in that it has the ability to help regulate the moisture within the capsule, especially if it's extremely wet or extremely dry. And then both of them are going to uh, fight off any bacteria or fungi that would be working, uh, you know, on the foot of the horse. Absolutely. And essentially what we're doing with these topicals, we are controlling the environmental factors that work against the foot itself. 
Uh, well, Mike, why don't you ask the question, and uh, and then I will get the timer ready. Okay. Let me find the question. Here, I've got it right here. Okay. You, you got, got it? it? Yeah. Okay. The question is, what is the total number of bones in the four legs of the horse? In oh. all four legs, what does that total? All right. So timer is set. Uh, and Mike, I think you uh, may have already given the answer to this one. Um, all right. I believe, I believe while that timer is going, we can answer a few questions that we've gotten. Uh, Penny would like to know, what is going on with joints and the synovial fluids when a horse has bog spavins? Bog spavins. If I'm saying that correctly. Uh, that's something that I would have to do just a little more research on myself there. In fact, I, I don't know all the if, ands, and buts about that to, mm -hmm. to give her an answer at this point in time. But what we will do is you, you have our email address. Mm -hmm. uh, we will respond back to you. Absolutely. Uh, probably uh, by the first of the week on that particular question. So if, if you don't mind emailing your question to cservice at lifedatalabs.com, uh, Mike can do you just a little bit of research on that and, and get back to you. Sure. Um, and then uh, Paula, which I know we'll, we'll be getting into this a little bit further on, uh, but she would like to know which one of your supplements do you recommend uh, in this situation? We have a 20-year-old mare that has arthritis. She has great feet and is able uh, to be barefoot uh, on our rocky, uh, rocky land, but her arthritis causes her to trip and be stiff when ridden. Well, uh, that's something that uh, typically comes about, uh, sorry to say, with a lot of our older horses. Uh, and typically when a horse reaches about 12 to 15, we're going to see some signs of some arthritic conditions or whatever. And, and the product that we have that we would recommend in your particular case there uh, actually is going to do two things. It's going to protect the foot of the horse. It's going to protect the joint of the horse. And this is actually a combo product in itself. So it's a product uh, supplement that we feed daily along with what you're already feeding. Uh, it only takes a half a cup or three ounces of this product per day for a 1,000 pound horse. Uh, meaning that the uh, yellow bag it will be a 60-day supply. Uh, being a combo, it is our hoof supplement plus the joint and 60 days. And if you do the math on it, it's actually a very economical product as well. In fact, it retails for about 120 uh, six months. I mean, a two-month supply, so that's $60 uh, per month. It's Wonderful. what you're going to spend, or two dollars per day, if you want to break it down further. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, well, it looks like that we uh, Will's got a winner for us. Uh, our timer went up a few seconds ago. Uh, again, the question is, uh, what is the total number of bones in the four legs of the horse? And the answer to that is eighty. That's correct. And our winner is Gerald Fueling. Gerald Fueling. Congratulations. Congratulations, Gerald. Gerald. Yeah. Uh, we'll just need you to email C service at lifedatalabs.com. In the subject line, you can put uh, live giveaway winner. Uh, we'll need your, uh, we have your name, but we'll need your address uh, and telephone number, and we'll be able to ship this to you and get this to you. And again, you've won the barriers finish, a hoof clay. Oh, we need your t shirt size. Yeah, right. And, and what color t shirt? Uh, again, we've got the teal, we have the dark green. And then we have a yellow, um, the hat, and then, of course, the compose. Uh, so congratulations. And uh, if you didn't win, no worries. We've got two more of these uh, sure. live giveaways. And then, of course, we have a grand prize giveaway at the end. Sure. So, mm -hmm. um, all right, Mike. So that was question number one, okay? Uh, when we think about joint damage, uh, and essentially any time we have a joint, that suffers some type of an injury, uh, then at some point in time, regardless of what we do, Corbin, uh, at some point down the road, more than likely, we're going to have an arthritic problem mm -hmm. in that joint. It's just like us as humans. If we break uh, an arm or a leg or whatever, at some point in time, we're going to end up with arthritis. Uh, I mean, that's just the way it is, and that's true with the horse as well. So when we think about uh, an injury or damage that uh, involves the joint itself, it comes about really from uh, over a period of time 
uh, and this and we're not talking about a break or anything mm -hmm. like this here but over a period of time it's either caused by an abnormal force that's working on normal cartilage okay or it's caused by normal forces that's working on abnormal cartilage as well okay. so you can have a problem can be created either way all right. Can you give okay. us a few, just a few examples? Of well, the, the critical thing there is balance. Okay. And so if, if the foot is not in balance, then that's transferred up through the leg itself, meaning that these joints are not in balance. Mm -hmm. And so anytime that joint is not in balance, then that's putting undue pressure at that point that force that we're talking about there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then over a period of time, we're going to end up with an injury, some mm -hmm. damage there, and then we see the lameness that mm -hmm. sets in, the inflammation that comes about, mm -hmm. uh, the inability to perform like the horse did at one point in mm -hmm. time as well. And I assume that's, you know, of course that's certain for any horse, uh, sure. but that'd be especially true for that horse that is performing uh, and training and, and working every sure. day. Right? Absolutely right, right. Any other questions there, Corbin? Are we good there? Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, we've got a couple here. If okay. you want to take a second. Sure. Um, uh, Kay would like to know, is there added iron in these supplements? No, absolutely not. And I know a lot of horse owners uh, are concerned about additional iron. Uh, there is no additional iron in any of our products. Okay. Um, Alexis Cook would like to know, are... I'm, I'm not going to pronounce this right. Burzas related to a joint? B U R S A S. Yes, okay. they are. Uh, for, right. for example, a horse with a navic navicular burza mm -hmm. inflammation, is that helped through joint supplements along with their hoof care and farrier schedule? Uh, all of the above, yes, will give some relief in a situation like that. Uh, it may take a specialty shoe, number one. Uh, hook supplement is going to help, joint, uh, joint supplement is going to help uh, in that situation as well. Okay. Um, and then Penny says, I have a horse with a cracked hoof, and my fairy said to give this two times a day. Is this good for the horse? Uh, when you say two times a day, I, I, I don't know if you're, you're referring to your feeding two times a day. If you are feeding two times a day and you're feeding uh, the hoof supplement, uh, then a thousand pound horse would receive about three ounces or if you're feeding two times per day uh, that'd be a quarter of a cup a.m. and a quarter of a cup p.m. which would be the equivalent of one and a half ounces two times per day okay. yes if that is the question yeah I believe so okay um, okay again uh, everybody uh, you know we are taking questions as we go so feel free to uh, continue those questions coming um, also uh, you know, there at the bottom, you can see scrolling. We do have our grand prize. Uh, you know, of course, we're going through the presentation. Definitely don't want you to miss the presentation, uh, but keep in mind that we will have that grand prize sure. um, at the end of this, and that link is down there at the bottom. Um, all right, Mike, well, we're and, ready to... Of course, yeah. and another thing that we need to consider, too, when we think about joint health, and, and that's actually the makeup of the horse itself. Mm -hmm. and, and when we consider the horse itself, about 60 to 65 percent of the weight of the horse is actually going to be on the front end of the horse. Mm. So typically we're going to end up with more injuries, more joint problems, and a lot of times more foot problems on the front end of the horse simply because it's having to carry that additional 10 to 15 per, uh, percent of the total weight of the animal Absolutely. there. And of course if we have a horse that is a jumper, then that just puts that much more undue stress uh, mm -hmm. on the front end of the horse to begin with. So typically, you know, the front end is the, the problem area a lot of times. Of course, there are certain activities, too, that uh, uh, where the hind end is going to come into play, such as cutting, such as reining, and so forth. In, in those horses, we have to be mindful of the hind end as well. Okay? So uh, would, would you suggest that... Um... Those, ho those horse owners who are, you know, doing disciplines where they might have extra stress on the on the front or the back. Is there anything that you would suggest uh, maybe looking into more so, uh, you know, in those areas? Sure. I think nutrition plays a, a very important part. 
uh, in maintaining and improving the health, not only of the foot, but the joint itself. And I think that's where a combo product such as DS plus joint comes into play, mm. you know. That's it's cool. going to help keep those healthy. It's going to help prolong mm. the usefulness of that horse in the end then. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I think at this point, if Mr. Wheel would bring up question number two. Let's take a look at that. Question number two. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so question number two, uh, what is the name of the fluid that lubricates the joint? Mm -hmm. uh, again, we're going to have two minutes to answer this question. Let me get my timer up. Uh, and then uh, out of the correct answers, Will is going to randomly select one, um, and that person is going to win our next prize pack. All right, so two minutes has started. Uh, while, while we have everybody answering this, Mike, uh, we do have a few questions for you to answer. Okay. Um, okay, uh, Haley says that she's heard that gelatin is good for uh, the growth of hoofs. Sorry, I'm trying to read hoofs and joints. Um, is that true? Can the, can the can gelatin benefit the joint? I would say that in a small percent of horses, that could be the case, yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, so we all know what gelatin is, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the thing about just gelatin by itself versus a complete hoof supplement is this, that with Ferris Formula, which is a complete hoof supplement, you're going to have a host of needed vitamins, minerals, and amino acids that's needed by that horse on a daily basis to grow optimum dermal tissue. Absolutely. And of course, the foot itself is dermal tissue. Mm -hmm. So that horse needs everything it needs nutritionally on a daily basis to regrow, to regenerate, and maintain the health of the foot. Now, not only is Ferris Formula going to improve the foot, but all, any dermal tissue within the animal itself. We're talking about skin, we're talking about hair coat, it's going to improve. And since we're talking about joints, Ferris Formula is going to help improve the health of the dermal side of the joint. Absolutely. Which is cartilage, tendon, ligament. Uh, so I guess at the end of the day, if you do provide that gelatin, you may not be providing not. those nutrients that the horse is missing right. that's causing those problems. Right. Right. Sure. So, and, and it's like, you know, like you said, that's a, that's the complete package. That's right. So you're you're not taking any chances of missing what the horse needs. That's right. Sure. Um, she followed up with a second question. Um, again, our area is really rocky and we have two other horses that get tender footed without shoes. Uh, which product or products do you recommend if we would like to work uh, towards keeping them barefoot? I, I would take a look at Ferris Formula. In fact, what Ferris Formula is going to do over a period of time is that internally it regrows the foot. Mm -hmm. And during this regrowth process, it's going to thicken and strengthen the hoof wall itself. But the most important thing that it's going to do for her horses, it's, it's going to thicken the sole of the foot. Mm. And the more sole that we have, the more protection that that horse has from a hard surface. Absolutely. And walking on that hard surface itself. In fact, I can kind of show you right here, uh, inside this particular hoof capsule here, course what Ferris formula is going to do is it's, it's going to regenerate this foot internally but it's going to start here at the coronary band and normally after about two to three months of feeding the product you're going to actually see and feel a slight bulge here at the coronary band and what that is is that's new hoof growth that the Ferris formula has uh, promoted uh, or helped the horse to grow and to complete the process, it's going to take another seven, eight, nine months to grow out the old foot and replace it with the new. But uh, if you take a look here, this is all the hoof wall that we actually have in this normal foot here. This is all the sole that we have, and this is a normal foot as well. So if you have an extremely thin soled uh, horse, then you have very little protection from a hard surface to the bottom of the coffin bone itself. So various formula is going to thicken this and give you more protection there. 
and, and that's what we're after. Absolutely. Um, we actually uh, we actually have a new testimonial uh, on our website that, that you can look at where we actually have x-rays that show the before and after of the soul growth mm -hmm. uh, for, for a horse who is actually battling laminitis. Okay. Uh, so that would, you know, something that interests you, uh, you know, visit our testimonials and, and take a look at that. Um, do we have a winner, Mr. Corbin? Uh, we, we do have a winner. Uh, again, the question was, uh, what is the name of the fluid that lubricates the joint? And uh, Mike, I'll let you give the answer to that one. Uh, it's an ovule fluid. An ovule fluid. Mm -hmm. Uh, created by the synovial membrane. And the winner of that is Heather Begley. Heather Begley. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, congratulations, Heather. Again, email cservice at lifedatalabs.com. Uh, subject line, you can just put live giveaway winner. Uh, we'll need your uh, address, telephone number, and then your t-shirt size and what color t-shirt that you would like. Um, again, you've won the finish. Uh, the clay, which would also be good for that rocky region right. uh, on our mm -hmm. previous question, uh, the T-shirt, the cap, and the compose. Uh, so congratulations, and uh, we still have one more uh, one trivia more question, question uh, along with, and then, of course, our grand prize giveaway that we'll talk about a little bit more at the end of this. Okay, uh, Mr. Will, I'd like slide number two, please, sir. Do we have it up? Yep. Okay. You have it up yet? Not quite. It's not on mine. It's the okay. That's okay. Okay. So what we're seeing here is a very bad arthritic knee. Okay. There's inflammation there. There's swelling there. In, in fact, this particular horse has some age as well. So there's very limited movement uh, within that knee itself. And, and this is what we're trying to avoid down the road in our horses by starting now, by mm -hmm. thinking about what we can do to help prevent and prolong the usefulness of our horse itself. So what I'd like to do, I've got about seven or eight items that I'm going to hit quickly. Okay. And some things that we can do, and some of, the, some of these we've already mentioned earlier, but one of the things that's highly important that we've already mentioned is the conformation of the horse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we're producing babies, Let's make sure that our mares have good confirmation, our stallions have good confirmation, and hopefully what we're going to produce will be a foal that has good confirmation, that doesn't have any limb, leg problems, or whatever from the get-go. Absolutely. Okay? So confirmation is highly important. The other thing that's highly important, and we've mentioned this one already, is a regular farrier schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got to do that. And especially if we have a horse that does have confirmation mm -hmm. problems, we don't want those horses to do, go too long before mm -hmm. we reset or retrim because we, the further we go, the more pressure that's being applied to the joint itself. Yep. And the quicker we're going to lose the usefulness of that Absolutely. horse in the process. Okay? I'll tell you what, Mike, if we, <laughs> if we have any farriers watching right now, yeah. um, I'd love for them to, to chime in in the comments and let us know sure. maybe a case where you know some unbalanced hooks cause some, sure. some joint, joint issues down mm -hmm. the road. Right. Another important thing, too, is body condition scope. Yeah, absolutely. We want to maintain the proper weight in our horses. A heavy horse, naturally, is going to put more pressure on our joints. Mm -hmm. And if that horse has some confirmation, too, then we're doubling the problem mm -hmm. in itself, okay? Body condition score. And what we're shooting for in most cases is, is at least a five to six, something in that neighborhood. And if we have a horse that's overweight, then what we need to take a look at is reducing calories, mm -hmm. but still providing the nutrients that that horse needs on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the products that we have here that's very helpful in doing that is a product called Barn Bag. Absolutely. We're able to separate calories from the nutrients, and it is a complement to whatever hay, forage we can feed the horse safely. Okay. Well, I've got a question for, sure. for you, Mike. Okay. I know uh, with a lot of these overweight horses, uh, we can have imbalances. Sure. Um, you know, in the nutrients due to uh, the extra calories or extra nutrients or whatnot that it might be receiving. From that imbalanced diet, it has mm -hmm. become imbalanced. Right. Can any of these imbalances 
of course, we know that the weight of the horse will affect the joint. Mm-hmm. Will any of the imbalances from the nutritional side of it also affect sure. the joint? Yes. And, and I think what you're referring to, Corbin, a lot of times with this overweight horse, if we're feeding a complete feed, mm-hmm. a lot of times we, we realize that the horse is overweight and then we start reducing the amount of that complete feed and we're not feeding the level that's recommended on a daily basis. So what we're doing, we're actually creating a nutrient deficiency. Mm -hmm. That horse is not receiving everything it needs daily Mm -hmm. to maintain itself. And when we talk about dermal tissue, we're still talking about cartilage, we're talking about tendon, we're talking about ligament, and that has to be fed on a daily basis. In fact, that's encompasses dermal tissue. Dermal tissue is the largest glandular organ in the horse itself, which requires massive amounts of nutrients in the right proportion and ratio to each other. Absolutely. Okay? Mm -hmm. So under supplementation, over supplementation works against dermal tissue, bottom line. Absolutely. And the overall health of the horse. All right, great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, Mr. Wheel, how about slide number three? Slide number three, you're going to see some different activities that's going on with these particular horses here. And that's going to affect the joint of the horse as well. And depending on what discipline our horse is participating in, uh, it's either going to take a toll on the front end or the hind end of the horse. And, and that's kind of our point there. So uh, I want to pull up question number three now. Are we going to, do you have it on the screen or am I saying the wrong thing? You're, you're, you're seeing the... Uh, we've we've got the, the four horses. Okay, yeah. let's go. All right, we've seen the four horses. Let's go to question number three now. Okay, okay. so... Uh, all right, we're going to do tri- trivia question number three. Yeah. Um, so, uh, again, this is going to be for our prize pack. Um, you're going to have two minutes to answer this question. Um, injury and disease is more common in the front limb joints or in the rear limb joints. Uh, so let me get this timer set. And uh, so you've got two minutes. Uh, good luck. And uh, while you're answering that, we'll ask Mike a few questions. Sure. I, think, I think that's a fair trade-off, don't you? It, it, it is. <laughs> and the reason that I asked Will to post the questions, I thought he was going to post them. Yeah, he is. He's, okay. about, yeah. He's got them up. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Are club feet genetic or an issue uh, that just arises? Could be a combination of both, just to be quite honest with you. Highly genetic, Yes. Uh, could be created from an injury at an earlier age or something like that. Jim. Gotcha. Okay. Club foot, it's hard to deal with sometimes. Uh, okay, uh, Vicki uh, says that I have a mare with very low pasterns, not diagnosed with DSLD yet. Mm-hmm. I was wondering if you have a product that will support uh, suspensor- suspensories. Well, uh, a joint supplement is going to help improve the situation. It's going to strengthen that as well. So how much improvement, I couldn't guarantee. But anytime if we can improve the health and the quality of the tendons, the ligaments, and so forth, then yes, it's going to be beneficial for the horse. Absolutely. Okay. Um, And we had someone ask about how, uh, when to start foals on trimming. Uh, our friend Kevin Brown, Brown's Farrier, says, um, just in case anyone missed his comment, anywhere from the first month up to six months. Absolutely. You start at a very young age. Uh, some of our foals need to be trimmed every two weeks, depending on the confirmation of the foal, mm-hmm. and especially if we've got anything that's abnormal going on. Absolutely. Uh, which then kind of brings me to add, to add on to that question, uh, how young can we start them on a hoof supplement or a hoof and joint supplement? Uh, essentially, when they get big enough to start nibbling and, and wanting the uh, the, the uh, feed that the, the mare is receiving, excellent time. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, our timer went off, and I'll announce that winner here in a second, but I have one more question. Uh, Kay would like to know, is the barn bag considered a ration balancer, a ration balancer and how much copper is in it? Uh, it is a ration or a forage balancer. 
Uh, I don't have the amount of copper that's in the product in front of me, but that's something that we can respond back to you. Okay. Yes. So we'll, we'll respond yeah. back to you and get that uh, get that answer to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So uh, I believe we've got a winner written down. Uh, so the live giveaway question number three: injury and disease is more common in the front or rear limb joints. And the answer to that is the front mm -hmm. limb joints. Correct. And that is due to, like, like you, the like more you mentioned. that's in the front of the horse. Absolutely. That's correct. And our winner on that is Vicki Scoggins. Congratulations, uh, so Congratulations, Vicki. Vicki. Sure. Uh, again, you're going to email cservice at lifedatalabs.com. And the subject line will just need, uh, just put, you can put live giveaway winner. Uh, we'll need your address, we'll need your t-shirt size, uh, what color t-shirt you'd like, and your phone number, uh, and we'll get this prize pack to you. Uh, that, that is the last of the live giveaways, sure. uh, but we still have our grand prize giveaway. Uh, that link has been scrolling down at the bottom uh, throughout this presentation. Uh, you can feel free to go to that and begin the process of uh, registering for that. Uh, but just remember that we have not given out the secret code yet. And you, and when you get the secret code, it pretty much doubles your doubles your entries. So you're definitely going to want that. Mm -hmm. um, all right, Mike. Well, I have one final point this afternoon, Corbin, and we, we just touched on it a few minutes ago, and that's, you know, when do you start? And as I suggested earlier in the presentation, we, we start with a, we can start with selecting our horses with the right confirmation to begin with. And then we start with the mare uh, while she's carrying the foe. Mm -hmm. And then we continue that process. So nutrition plays a vital part in maintaining the overall well-being of a horse, the foot of the horse, and certainly the joint of the horse. Mm -hmm. And of course, the joint and the foot the skin, the hair, all fall under this large glandular organ that we refer to as dermal tissue. Mm -hmm. And we've got to feed that on a daily basis. And we've got to provide a balanced diet to the horse on about a daily basis as well. And so after we provide this daily diet to the horse, if we still have foot issues, then we add a hoof supplement such as Ferris Formula. And, and then one of the easiest things to do is to incorporate Ferris formula or DS plus joint. You know, we're already feeding Ferris formula to begin with. So for an additional few dollars more per month, we can protect the joint of the horse at, in the process as well. All in one feeding, combo product. It's a highly palatable product. It's an alfalfa based product. Uh, and of course, uh, it's going to protect the foot, it's going to protect uh, the joint, and it's going to protect the joint in the fact that it has certain ingredients in it that it's going to help improve fluid. If we have a bone issue, it's going to help with that as well. It's going to help reduce inflammation as we feed the product as well. Well, can you tell our viewers what's the, what's the benefit of feeding the double strength plus joint versus feeding a sure. hoof supplement and a joint supplement right. separately. One of the things that we have run into here at Life Data Labs is that we've had many, many horse owners that are feeding Ferris formula. And they have decided that they needed to add a joint supplement. And the problem that has come up with the two separate items itself is that a lot of those joint supplements actually contained MSM. Mm -hmm. And MSM is just a form of sulfur, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if you take a look at Ferris formula, Ferris formula has D-L-methionine in it, which is a, an amino acid, mm -hmm. which is a natural form of sulfur. But what's in Ferris formula is sufficient for the horse on a daily basis. And then we, and we, if we add a joint supplement that adds the MSM, then we're crossing the line. Mm -hmm. We're creating... Uh, toxicity prob problem there. And this excess sulfur in the diet of the horse actually works against hoof quality. And, and we've seen this in many, many cases. Mm -hmm. And so we've had to go to these horse owners and say, if you're going to feed a separate joint supplement, select you one that doesn't have mm -hmm. the MSM or the added sulfur in it. 
And just to add, I get this isn't just a problem with berries forming, but just hoof supplements in that, general. That's correct. Uh, right. ha, have the, kind of usually have that that right. sulfur in it. Right. So berries formula has all the sulfur you need derived naturally from D-L-methionine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's one of the reasons that the, this product was created to help uh, alleviate that situation there. Mm -hmm. So we have the balance of sulfur there. And we also have glucosamine in the product, there's ornithine in the product, there's proline in the product, there's manganese in the product, and then there's sufficient uh, uh, sulfur in the product. In fact, what's in the DL-methionine would be the equivalent of about 3,500 milligrams of MSM on a daily basis. Absolutely. Okay. And so by doing this, you're not giving up any type, you're not giving up uh, the hoof nutrients that you, no. you know, that you'd be getting from Ferris formula. It contains the same amount of hoof nutrients, right. just has that added benefit of the joints. That's correct. Uh, and so I know a lot of people, you know, when they do talk about combo product, they don't think they're getting as much, but they're actually getting more. They're getting, they're getting what that horse needs right. to have that healthy joint mm -hmm. and that healthy hoof. Sure. And, and if you're feeding Ferris formula, especially the double strength by itself, you're paying about $70 for that bag. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, for an additional $50, you can get the combo product. And if you look at that on a monthly basis, you're only adding an additional $25 per month to protect the joint of the horse, mm -hmm. less than a dollar per day. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times buying them separately is going to end up sure. being more expensive. Right. Um, well, while we're talking about the joint uh, product, while we're, as we're talking about double strength plus joint, you want to talk about our grand prize giveaway? That's going to be our grand prize giveaway. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we're going to give away three of these to three lucky winners. Uh, retails for about one twenty. Absolutely. And so that'll be a two month supply for your thousand pound horse. Absolutely. And, and like mm -hmm. we talked about, you know, it's not, uh, you know, it's not not too early. You know, really any horse can can sure. use this. You can use that as a preventative. You can use it. If you got uh, to, a problem. To help preserve sure. and to help, right. help with a current problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to give away three of these. Um, and the way that you're going to win um, is you're going to go to lifedata.live slash win. So you can just put that into your, your, your URL. Uh, you can hop over, uh, fill in uh, the different mm -hmm. information. There's different little tasks that you can do to increase your chances to win. Um, and our secret code that is going to help you with your chances, uh, kind of like we've talked about today. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to uh, fix a problem, to cure a problem, than it is to prevent one, right? Sure. Uh, especially when it comes to joints. So our keyword today uh, is going to be prevention. Prevention, sure. Okay. Because uh, that's what that's what we're hoping to do is is to prevent these joint problems. So if you um, include that into your entry, then you're going to increase your chances of winning. The absolutely, product. Is that absolutely, the way it works. Mm -hmm. That's okay. right. Uh, so again, that link has been scrolling there at the bottom. Uh, you can hop over there, enter that in. Uh, another really great way to get some extra entries is by sharing the contest with others. Uh, there's a there's a shareable link uh, that that's basically just your link. It's designed for you. Um, there at the bottom, and you can click that. You can share that with others, and when they fill out and enter the contest, you also get extra points. Sure. So, and that you can just keep adding on points on top, on top of the more people you have uh, fill that out. Uh, so we're going to give away three of those. We're going to go live Tuesday at two o'clock, same Central time, time, right? Uh, and we're going to announce the winners then. Mm -hmm. um, and we will ship that to you. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, we already have our next live event scheduled. We do. I can't um, remember the date, but it's in <laughs> August. Yeah, that's right. Um, so uh, we've been getting a lot of questions on laminitis. Right. Uh, of course, we did a laminitis one a little bit, you know, earlier in the year. I believe it was in January, um, and we we've continued to get questions on laminitis. So we're going to do another one. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do another live event on laminitis. Uh, it's going to be August twentieth. Um, at 2 o'clock p.m. Central. Uh, the event is already up, so you can go ahead and register for it. Uh, Will, I believe he just put up that uh, that link there. So you can go to lifedata.live slash fblaminitis, um, and you can register for that. And um, and we're that's, that's our next live event, so we're going to start sure. preparing for that and getting ready for that. Uh, it's a really great one. We're going to talk about prevention. We're going to talk about uh, causes of laminitis, uh, things that you can do to help support the current laminitis, uh, laminitic course. 
Uh, so it's going to be a really, really great uh, seminar that we hope that you can join us for. And for those of you that are joining us this afternoon, if there's a question about laminitis or a particular point about laminitis that you would like us to cover, send that in. Let us know. Let us know what that is. Absolutely. Um, well, we have a few questions, um, and we have some extra time. Sure. Uh, so I'm going to uh, ask Mike these last uh, last little questions. So if you've got a question, drop it in. Uh, now is the time, and uh, we'll get those in. Um, let's see. Uh, we had someone expand on the whole, you know, feeding it twice per day. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was the... Uh, the? The farrier suggested, I guess, feeding farrier's formula uh, twice a day. Mm -hmm. Um so I guess what your point was, you don't want to go over the, the feeding level per day, but if you would like to split that feeding level into two sure, there's nothing doses, wrong with you, that. you can do right, that. Right. But, uh, but make sure you're feeding the, to, the, yeah, the, right. to the level that's on the instructions on the back. And some of our farriers will suggest uh, to their clients that they double dose the product for mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. And it's perfectly fine to do that. If you want to do that for a couple of weeks, what that does is that gets it into the system of the horse a little bit quicker. Absolutely. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's all that does. And then after that two-week period, we'll go back or go to the recommended feeding rate according to the weight of your horse then. Absolutely. Um, so Mary would like to know, uh, so what would you recommend for an older mare, late 20s, with two arthritic front knees, uh, one is like that photo you had up um, for question for question three, and the other one is a little worse. We're feeding her the way the vet recommended. Okay. Uh, so you want to talk about, I guess, what you would do for that for that older? Well, uh, you need the assistance of a good farrier. Number one, your farrier is, and I don't know if the horse. I'm assuming the horses are going to be barefoot, uh, but the farrier will understand how to trim the foot to take some of the pressure off the knee itself, mm. okay? So that's my starting point. Uh, I would include a joint supplement as well. Uh, we want to maintain the body condition as well in those horses that already have the knee issues. We don't want them to be overweight by all means. So take a look at those three things there. Mm -hmm. The way the foot's trimmed, uh, the addition of a joint supplement, uh, and maintain the uh, correct body weight. Absolutely. Uh, Desiree says, your product has saved my barrel horse's feet. Great information, guys. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you. I appreciate yep. it. Let's see if we got any left over. Okay, uh, that's that's it. That's the last questions we had. Um, so again, if we missed your question, uh, or if you happen to come up with one later, uh, please feel free to uh, to message us and let us know. Uh, that grand prize is, is go, that contest is running through the weekend. Uh, so you know if you didn't get to watch us live and you're watching this on, on a Saturday mm -hmm. or Sunday, you can still enter in that uh, that contest, uh, and we'll be going live Tuesday to announce that. Sure. Uh, pl uh, please, you know, re recommend the video to others, share it, uh, share the contest, and uh, and don't forget to RSVP to our next. Uh, live event on laminitis on august 20th august the 20th okay absolutely all right all right uh we hope everybody has a great weekend sure thanks for joining us yeah thank you very much for your time this afternoon mm -hmm.